My name is Tim Karen. I'm going to show you how to become a strength coach. This book is broken up into four sections. The start, the transition, the job, and hard choices. The reason why I chose those four sections is because I think these are the phases that are laid out for each strength coach. All right, let's, let's just start. Let's see what we can do to start momentum to get in the job. The transition, interviewing, going for that transition from being a intern to actual coach. The job, which is easily the part that no one talks about, right? This, you just got a lemon, and if we can get ahead on that and say there is a good and a bad aspect to every profession, strength conditioning is not any different. And then finally, the hard choices, right? That everyone hits this proverbial fork in the road of how much can I sustain this over a longer period of time. These four sections are going to be your master class of becoming a strength coach. Make sure that you're grabbing onto this and understanding this at a higher level as possible. Because if you don't, then you're going to constantly come up to this. I don't understand why I'm doing this. What's the point? And you're always going to wonder if you could have done more. Who am I? I'm a strength coach. I've been doing this for 18 years. I've worked in every sector. I own a gym in Los Angeles. I've been working as a educator with PH Podcast for the past two years. Authored a book, Strength Deficit. This would be my second book. My experience, though, is really tied into working with athletes and clients. Head strength coach at Army West Point. Associate Strength Coach at University of Southern California. Assistant Strength Coach at Georgia Tech. Graduate Assistant at Springfield College. Now I currently own and operate three gyms in Los Angeles named Legit. Working with Gen Pop, athletes, everybody under the sun. My experience is really tied into developing and mentoring coaches. I have seen hundreds of coaches come through the gyms that I've worked at. I've directly supervised. I've directly mentored. Now with PH Podcast, I have a whole new platform to reach coaches and help them develop their skill set. And one of the things that I've seen a lot over the past 18 years is there's not a really good resource for career development and strength and conditioning. What I find often is most young strength coaches are kind of confused about the path they need to go. And a lot of it's built off our own experiences, myself included. That the path needs to be arduous and constantly straining. You need to put in a lot of hours. You need to volunteer. You need to make sure that you're doing whatever you need to do to get your foot in the door. And a lot of times that comes at the personal expense of your money. A lot of times that comes at a personal expense of your relationships and your family. A lot of times that comes at the expense of just overall your, your values and your appreciation for the industry. This is the most amazing industry. And I... I strongly believe that you have the power to change people for the better which is unlike any one of the any one of the things that any of your friends are doing in the industry that you can look at your accountant friends or your financial friends or anyone that's doing anything where they're making a lot of money you can do look at the avenue of working with with students as a teacher or a social worker anything that potentially might be extremely rewarding or something that you're doing something that's selfless Strength conditioning is the perfect hybrid of both of those. We get to work with people, and potentially, if we're good, we can monetize our skill set. But it might come at a cost, a cost that's greater than we realize. Any young coach that's going to be going through this course, any young coach that's aspiring to become a strength conditioning coach, any young coach that just wants to be able to help people but not go broke or not have to live in nowhere part of America, to do that, they're going to come to this realization that the process of becoming a strength coach may not be worth the actual time and the investment you need to become. And the outcome might not be there. Because I'm speaking firsthand now when I say this, that after countless hours of interning, the joke was with every internship I did, and I did four of them before I even got my first job, was I'm going to be the best intern that's ever existed. Right, that I've accrued so much time and experience and knowledge and insight that no one could compete with me as an intern. But as I look back over that, and time at the time it was supposed to be funny, but as in hindsight, it actually was kind of sad and maybe potentially putting me in this disillusioned state that I got blinders on to my job that I wanted to get. I interned at Harvard, I interned at Velocity, I interned at Georgia Tech, I interned at Ole Miss, I volunteered at high school. 
any job that would take me in the health and fitness space between corporate wellness, group fitness, any big box gym, I would take because I needed to supplement my income to be able to become an intern, to be able to hopefully become a strength coach. And then my first job, and now mind you, this is 18 years ago, I was making $32,000 a year. And I worked with football and a winter sport basketball. I didn't have a week off or a day off really for four years. And what I did was got burnt out. What I did was I completely became disenfranchised with the entire process of becoming a strength coach, something that I put on such a high pedestal because it wasn't the outcome that I thought it was going to be. It was a lot of work. It wasn't, it was being underappreciated. It was, it was this whole process of I sacrificed so much, missed weddings, missed funerals, missed so much of my family, missed so many things that I could have been a part of all to make $32,000 or $32,000 a year without a day off and not really being appreciated, and not really being valued. So as I look back over those experiences, and I look now towards the future, and where I want to be for me, and where I want the profession to go, is I don't want to deter young, talented, capable strength conditioning coaches that are just simply looking at this going, that doesn't make sense. I don't want to have to do four or five internships. I don't want to have to sacrifice everything. I don't want to move all around the country out of my own pocket just to be make $32,000 a year. And here's the one common. That number hasn't changed. In fact, and quite frankly, it's probably gone lower. I was able to get a graduate assistant where my master's degree was paid for. And I was capable of actually getting a little bit of money. But I was actually really benefited because I had the opportunity to live at home. I grew up 15 minutes away from Springfield College so I could live at home, go get my master's, and then save some money so I could do more internships, which is kind of ironic that I actually self-thought that. But I was fortunate enough to get a job early because I was probably pretty good. Now, on the other end, I look through, I see a lot of young strength coaches, and you start to get the conversation going, what it's actually going to take, and they give you this glossed-over look of, like, is that necessary? And they're probably right. But we perpetuate this idea of we need to continue this over and over and over because that's what I did. So you have to do the same thing. And what I'm telling you right now with this course, with this book, is there's got to be another way. There's got to be a way to become the strength coach that you know you want to become. And then look at it from the other level of I don't need to sacrifice everything to get that. It might come down to making some better choices. It might come down to looking and evaluating the circumstances that you're in, how to leverage that. It might come down to developing priorities and understanding that your best way to serve others and becoming a strength conditioning coach might not mean being at a big university or professional sports organization. It might not mean having to move across the country. It might mean, hey, I'm just going to do what I do here where I'm from might mean where I'm gonna, I'm gonna do it right by my college, which I got a pretty good opportunity to work at right after college because there's a connection there. It might mean, hey, I'm good enough where I can go out there and push for that and I know I'm gonna be able to get what I want because I know I am that capable. But it comes at the expense of a couple things short term. So you're playing the long game there. And these are the conversations we're gonna have with how to become a strength coach. Bottom line is as we look through the careers of everyone that started this myself included 20 years ago plus is we have to evaluate whether that needs to be the trend one of the things that i learned as i opened up a business and i was talking to my counterparts my partners my investors was we can get people to volunteer based off of just me that i've had enough volunteers and i have enough interns to help me at the college level now a lot of that changed when i opened up my business and we didn't have enough of the pedigree or the established name, but it didn't change the fact that my likeness and my namesake was able to get a lot of volunteers and interns. And over the years, I looked at them and said, you bet on me, I'm gonna bet on you and I'm gonna put as much as I can into you. And that's what developed and honed this whole system, this course, this book. Everything that you're gonna get within this is going to be something that you're going to be able to take with you for the rest of your career because I've done it with countless strength coaches already. That I've served so many different young strength coaches and asking them hard questions of what do you want and how bad do you want it? And then really the most important one, why do you want that? And going forth and saying, hey, if you really want something, 
and you're willing to do what it takes to get it, here's how to fast track that. Here's how you can establish an inroad in strength conditioning that no one else can compete with. The coaches that come through my system, they have a certain pedigree. They have a certain, certain thing about them that makes them different. And that's what I'm giving you here. This is my gift back to strength conditioning. This is my, my opportunity to help and re redirect and steer strength conditioning in a positive way for the future. That's what my hope is. And I hope you guys take a lot of value from this course. I hope you guys look at this and say, thank this thankful for this resource because I needed a mentor and some guidance like that. If you really enjoy this experience, I got two options for you. One, get Strength Deficit, the book and the courses. To become a member of the PH podcast because that is going to be the seminal resource as you go past this course and this book because there's a lot more to dive into, just not going to be able to get to it with this course. Thanks, guys, and we'll see you right on the next one.